From the Super Show in Atlanta, Georgia, it's the United States Finals of the 1990 Reebok National Aerobic Championship. And competing for the national title, here are America's 70 best aerobic athletes. Welcome, the 1989 Reebok National Aerobic Champions. Great Torelli, Tanaj Millward, Troy Markle, Deborah McGee, Marlene Tucker, Paul Bell, Merlene Tucker. And from a field of over 2,000 competitors across the USA, here are the 70 finalists. In the mixed pairs from San Francisco Bay Club, Lori Pinavia and Andy Miller. From Body Business in Austin, Melanie Peck and Greg McCabe. From Williams Island Spa in Miami, Beanie Osmond and Robert Gutierrez. From U.S. Women Fitness in Minneapolis, Lee Spenwin and Kevin Cregan. From the Center Club in Alexandria, Connie Anderson and Chris Dalen. From Tilton Athletic Club in New Jersey, Sharon Schofield and Anthony DeBeo. From Boulder's Pulse in Colorado, Jillian Goldenberg and Jim Winkleman. From Brignoli Fitness in Pasadena, Michelle Nevadovsky and Chris Galen. From Lenexa and Sweats in Kansas City, Penny Brown and Daryl Burke. From Muscle Mixes in Orlando, Michael Thompson and Kelly Ginolat. In the team's competition. From Primetime Athletic Club in Burlingame, California, Cindy Silva, Jordana Williams, and Lori Eric. From Body Rock Houston in Houston, Texas, Mark Rees, Leslie Hills, and Kim Kelpie. From Miami, Florida, Charmaine Bassett, Frank Laberdesk, and Orlando Garcia. From the fitness circuit in Cleveland, Ohio, Joni Malakar, Tammy Johnston, and James Weir. From the club at Westfields in Chantilly, Virginia, Hope Carter, Jeannie McTurk, and Rhonda Story. From Royal Racquetball in Long Island, New York, Michelle Schmella, Jackie Birdie, and Deborah Dee. From fitness technology in Salt Lake City, Patrice Martin, Rhonda Ekman, and Sherry Nalder. From the Sports Club LA in Los Angeles, Tyler Patterson, Brett Kelly, and Patrick Goudeau. From Gold's Gym in Greenville, South Carolina, Linda Evans, Robert Middlebrooks, and Ivy Smith. And from San Francisco Bay Club in San Francisco, Diane Teresi Thomas, Andy Miller, and Nick Standrover. And in the individual competition, women's division. From San Francisco Bay Club, Mindy Milray. From Jerry Trump and Teamwork in Texas, Mitzi Ruff. From Peggy's Workout in Fort Lauderdale, Peg McKinney. From Second Wind Inc. in Chicago, Teresa McCabe. From Brenda's Body Shop in Oakland, Maryland, Gail Bosley. From Fitcore Health and Fitness Center in Boston, Diane Nanfeld. From National Institute of Fitness, Utah, Holly Keenan. From Point Fitness in Los Angeles, Joan Winson. From The Sweat Shop in Kansas City, Shelly King. And from Lions Health and Fitness in Redlands, California, Linda Bell. And in the men's division, representing the Seattle Athletic Club, Mark Castillo. From World Gym in Houston, Texas, James Johnson. From American Fitness Center in Tampa, Florida, Clay Grant. From the Sweat Shop in St. Paul, Minnesota, Michael Perrin. From Brick Bodies in Timonium, Maryland, Greg Blair. From Oceanside Gym in Pleasantville, New Jersey, Anthony DeMeo. From Super Bodies in Denver, Clifford C. Boyce Jr. From Western Reserve Club in Phoenix, Arizona, Peter Dale. From Gold's Gym in Greenville, South Carolina, Nick Farmer. And from World's Gym in Columbus, Ohio, Eric Pierce.
Hello, I'm Chris Marlowe, and welcome to the most prestigious aerobic championship in the world. Over 2,000 athletes in this competition, and now, one year later, we are down to the elite 21 finalists. At stake, not only the national title, but a shot at the world championship, an event that's going to be beginning this summer. Happy to have working with me one of the foremost authorities in the sport of competitive aerobics. As she has her own television show called It Figures. Her name is Charlene Prickett. And Charlene, uh, since 1984, the sport of aerobics has really grown. Oh, Chris, this is an American sport that has exploded around the globe. We will see 16 countries compete in the World Championships in San Diego in June. And all of those countries use the very rules and guidelines of this competition. Indeed, the International Competitive Aerobics Federation has been recently formed to serve as the governing body for all these competitions. Did you know that the Soviet Union is just having their first competition this summer? The Soviets! Who would have dreamed? This is the seventh year for a national championship competition in the United States. Uh, how about explaining the format for 1990? We'll see competition in mixed pair, in individual women's, individual men's, and team. Now in team, you can have any combination of men or women, but it just so happens that the teams that have made it to these finals all consist of two women, two men, and one woman. Now, in the past, we have seen a team of three women pitted against three men. And who won that? Well, one year the women won, and one year the men won, so there's no bias. All right, Charlene mentioned the international flavor. We have a team from Japan here doing a routine. How good are they? They are hot, and let me assure you, they are scouting this competition for moves that they could use to prepare for the world. Okay, it's the Reebok National Aerobic Championship. We'll start our competition after this. Welcome back to the Reebok National Aerobic Championship here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Chris Barlow along with Charlene Prickett. We're getting set for competition in the mixed pair division. And before we get to that competition, uh, Charlene, perhaps you should go over the rules. The competitors must present a one minute, 45 second routine, which includes the four compulsory moves. And to demonstrate those moves for you, we meet two regional champions. Patrice Martin shows us four consecutive jumping jacks. Her heels must come down, her abdominals must be pulled in, and there should be no hyperextension, that's arching of the lower back. Michael Perrin shows us four consecutive abdominal curls. At the start, the low back must be flat against the floor, and the movement must be initiated by the abdominal muscles, not by pulling the head and neck forward or throwing the arms. Patrice demonstrates four consecutive high kicks. Those legs should be raised and lowered with good control, and the back must be straight. Michael demonstrates four consecutive push-ups. The chest must be lowered to within four inches of the floor, and the elbows must never be locked. Now, 60% of the competitor's total score is skill and technique. That involves strength, flexibility, transitions, and correct execution of every movement. The remaining 40% is overall presentation. This involves unique combinations of movements, musical interpretation, showmanship, and appearance. That's the ground rules, but I'll tell you more as we get into the competition. Okay. Uh, this week, we narrowed the field of uh, regional competitors down to three mixed pairs, three individuals, and three teams placing highest in the qualifying competitions. Competing now for the national mixed pair title, our finalists, Kevin Cregan and Lee Spenwin, representing U.S. Swim and Fitness in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Kelly Ginalot and Michael Thompson representing Muscle Mixes in Orlando, Florida. And competing first, representing Brignoli Fitness in Los Angeles, California, Michelle Nevadomsky and Chris Galen.
This is a team that has been training two hours a day, five days a week for eight months. Michelle is 23, Chris also 23. Here they go. You'll see in this team very precise movements. They have great control and have worked very hard on the synchronization and the crispness of their movements. They work very close together, close proximity of their bodies, and that's hard because they can get entangled and bump up, but they never seem to. Both are tremendous athletes. Michelle, originally a gymnast. Chris was a swimmer when he was young. Now, coming up is a little wall step. Look, look, see how, the, how cleverly they do that. They get points there for original choreography. That's spicy. It's interesting. Do the uniforms make a difference in this competition? Certainly, their overall appearance bears. So, yes. Good straddle jump. Now, show me some push-ups. One arm. And look, she gets right down there. She's easily coming within four inches of the floor. Although you'll usually see the men come lower. Men are more muscled in the upper body and find those strength moves easier. Abdominals. Notice how the belly presses down as the shoulders lift off the floor. All right, now some aerobic moves. The judges like to see lots of nice big moves. And a little rock kick. We've not seen that bit of choreography before. Split on both legs to show flexibility. Now a little personality, a little playfulness here, interpreting the music. And beautiful high kick showing from all angles. When they do those kicks, the trunk is real erect, you know, and they don't punch over at all. And they nail the ending. And now from Orlando, Florida, here are Kelly Ginalot and Michael Thompson. <laughs> Kelly is 22 years old, Michael Thompson 33. He is the oldest male competitor in the finals. These two are performers at Walt Disney World, so the stage and presentation and audience rapport is nothing new to them. They're good at it. All right, showing us push-ups, compulsories right off the bat. Look, she's touching right down. And now, one arm. And now, stacked legs. Let's make it harder and harder. Is it an advantage and to do the strength good. maneuvers early? Uh, no, no, no. Perhaps some teams would, though, think let's not save it till the bitter end when we're already fatigued. They can come in where the judges won't miss them. A little leg wobble. Nice choreography. Nice spice. She was a national baton champion in 1984, and he starred in the Broadway musical 42nd Street. Now, leg hold, but it's rush. All right, a double decker. She's overloading his pocket up. That is great. Both two abdominal curls. I'm concerned, though, that on that leg hold, it happens so fast, they don't get to milk it for all it's worth. These abdominals are good. And just a quick little balance. And roll over. For some nice aerobic moves. The judges want to see big range of motion, kicks and big arms. A straddle jump. Now watch this. Watch. Split in the air. Split on the ground. Great flexibility. And their final pose, the shoulders are, oh, oh, she's slipping. It didn't stick. What a shame. My other concern is that leg hold. Gosh, they, they may have milked more out of it had they held it longer. Okay. And our third mixed pair finalist, Lee Spenwin and Kevin Cregan. <laughs> Lee is 24 years old, a director of aerobics. Kevin is 28. This is his third time to these finals, and last year he placed second in the men's category. This team has been training for seven months, three hours a day, and lifting weights five days a week. Oblique kicks right off the bat. These kids are already warmed up. A little can-can for spice, straddle jump. Oh, and was that pretty? Look how high they come. 
come off the floor and these abdominal compulsories. The shoulders come way off. Let's overload for push-ups and make it harder. Let's rotate it and make it harder. You know, the judges say, don't, don't overload. Don't make these things more difficult if you can't do them well. So most of these competitors don't take risks. Is strength or flexibility more important well, in this you've competition? You've got to have both. You won't get away without both. It generally is the case that women are naturally more flexible, men stronger. So they both have to work to even out their balance. All right, here we go. Split. A straddle hold which goes through, goes right back through to the push-up. That's really hard to do, and it's even complicated by the rubber sole aerobic shoes. One-arm push-up, she's worked hard on this. A leg hold, she would have had more points there had she done it on her own. It's a little easier bracing against Kevin's weight. Oh, and they pinned the shoulder. You know, they were always a little concerned about the ending. They use every movement of that routine to showcase the strength. They don't waste time. They have a good chance. Okay, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll announce who wins the gold medal in the mixed pairs competition. Stay with us. Chris Marlowe and Charlene Prickett back at the Reebok National Aerobic Championship. You know, with a high level of skill and performance demonstrated in this competition, judging requires a vast technical knowledge and expertise. A qualified panel of technical experts are certified by IDEA, the Association for Fitness Professionals, which is the sanctioning body for this championship. Let's now meet our six judges. The three judging skill are Lee Cruz, Lana Calhoun and Elaine Tarrington and the three judging artistic presentation Kathy Davis Alan Sokoloff and Dennis Fiore and the official timekeeper is Mimi McCarthy Okay, we have come to the moment. The judges have completed their scoring, and we have the results. Here to present the gold medal, the 1989 United States Mixed Pair Champions, Deborah McGee and Troy Markle. The scoring, with a skill score of 167.5 out of 180, and a presentation score of 106 out of 120, making their combined total of 273.5 out of 300. The 1990 Reebok National Aerobic Champions in the mixed pair division are Kevin Cregan and Lee Spenwin, representing U.S. Swim and Fitness in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Woo, that is one thrilled man. You know Kevin moved from Dallas, Texas. He moved in with Lee and her husband in Minneapolis for seven months to train for this event. Has it ever paid off for these two athletes? Interestingly, the winning score, 273.5. Second place, just right behind, 261, Kelly Ginalot and Michael Thompson. Third place, 245 and a half, Chris Galen and Michelle Nevodomskis. And so our congratulations to our first champions of the night, the mixed pair champions. You know, we mentioned a little earlier that the first world aerobic championship is going to be held June 8th in San Diego with 16 countries participating. How would the United States do in international competition? We're going to find out. We have a great team from Japan, the All Japan Aerobic Champions. Watch them. Chris, competitive aerobics is so popular in Japan. This is their fifth year for a national championship. And in Japan, if you want to be a competitor in the championship, you call in and register on a toll-free line. Well, this year, when they opened that toll-free line, within the first 30 minutes in Tokyo alone, they got 1,200 competitors.
it for his badges. Let's walk. Stay with us here on ESPN. Coming up, the women's individual competition. Should be exciting. Chris Marlowe along with Charlene Prickett back at the Reebok National Aerobic Championship. You know, from thousands of athletes who competed in the regional competitions throughout the United States, we are now down to just three finalists in the women's individual competition. Let's meet them right now. From the San Francisco Bay Club in San Francisco, California, Mindy Milray. And from Voight Fitness in Los Angeles, California, Joan Winson. And competing first from Fitcore Health and Fitness in Boston, Massachusetts, here's Diane Nanfeld. <laughs> Diane is 27 years old. She's an aerobics instructor, studied at the Boston Conservator, uh, Conservatory, I should say. Here she goes. She really has cross-trained stairmaster, war machine, downhill skill, running. She's a dance teacher. You'll see, you'll see her dance background in this routine. Let's watch. This is her first uh, time in the finals. Phenomenal compulsories done well and a turning straddle press and how long she held it. She gets major points for strength. In your opinion, is it more difficult doing an individual routine or a team routine? I think the individuals are harder. You have no one to choreograph with. You have no one to, to interact and bounce off of. It is a one-man show. Tip push-ups, not just full body, complete down to the floor push-ups, but from the fingertips. Will the judges see that the fingertip oh, action? They don't miss a trick, Chris. Bum bum, nice little musical interpretation. My concern here is that there's an awful lot of dance at the sacrifice of big, powerful aerobic movements that create a cardiovascular demand. And that may harm, to some extent, her score for exercise selection. That, that's my concern. That would be what, what would bring her down. OK, our first competitor is done. Now, next up, from Los Angeles, Joan Winson. Joan, 30 years old, originally a classical ballet dancer. And it shows. Fourth year in the competition, first trip to the finals. Her dance background allows her to carry off this presentation. Look at the strength in this one-arm push-up. She's been here three times and has gone home every time and worked on that upper body strength. How important is a uniform in, in a competition like this? It needs to show their their best side. It, it, it contributes to overall appearance, without question. In the presentation side? Yeah. All right, now, her abdominal compulsories are very well done. Always with a little something else going on in the body. If we're going to do compulsories, let's do them interesting. Look at that leg hold. And she brought it up from the floor. She gets triple points. She gets strength. Flexibility and balance. 
attended the University of Cincinnati, now lives in Los Angeles. She's a fitness personal trainer. Now, another leg hole. Watch this. A squat, bam, right down into full splits. Now, here is her signature in a split with the front leg crossed over her pressing arms. That is a great move. And she created it. It is her contribution to this sport. Wait a minute. We'll see it again. She has no problem with flexibility then. No. <laughs> More strength. This woman has worked so hard. She wants this title and she sweated for it. Her strength, her flexibility, her choreography, and her presentation make her very hard to beat. All right, last but not least, out of San Francisco, welcome Mindy Milray. Mindy is 28 years old. She has two kids, a couple of little boys, two and three. She's been training for this competition for over a year. Leg hold, splits, roll over, split again. She's getting the audience on her side. She's got good report. You know, this trooper trained right through the San Francisco earthquake. Interestingly, she lost a month of training. Will that hurt her? Oh, I don't think you'll ever see it. She had started well ahead. Splits on both sides. Now watch the little pushback between every push up. It makes them harder and impresses the judges. Let's do some rotation. Let's do one arm. Her shoulders are parallel, just as they should be in one horizontal plane. Oh, and another one. Now watch this. Leg hold up from the floor. Oh, she did just touch with her left hand there, just as she was raising. She's never done that Will that before. be a deduction? They've seen this before, and they know that that's, that's not necessary. I think she'll lose a few points for that. You know, the pressure of competition. Lives in Santa Cruz, California now. Her husband, among other things, is a surfer. Probably watching this one, enjoying it. Her compulsories are well done. As are all the competitors. These compulsories are no problem for them. I know she is just sick about that little tiny glitch. Look, her end is a held one-arm push-up. She's sick about just having to touch the floor with that left hand on the raise on the leg hold. You know that might make the difference between her and Joan. All right, up next, the announcement of the Reebok National Aerobic Champion in the women's division. And we'll tell you how you can become a competitor. Stay with us. Welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. This is the Reebok National Aerobic Championship. I'm Chris Marlowe, along with Charlene Prickett. Well, the scores are in. We're ready for the results. Here to present the medal, the gold medal, the 1989 Women's Individual Reebok National Aerobic Champion, Tanaj Milward. All right, let's give you the scoring. A skill score of 166 out of 180. A presentation score of 111.5 out of 120, bringing her combined total to 277.5 out of 300. Your 1990 Women's Reebok National Aerobic Champion is, out of Los Angeles, Joan Winson, representing Voight Fitness Center in LA. Second place went to Mindy Milray with 255 points. Third place, Diane Manfeld with 240 points. Uh, tremendous competition. Joan Winson out of Los Angeles. Once again, our congratulations to Joan Winson, the women's individual champion. You know, if you would like to compete in one of the regional competitions of the Reebok National Aerobic Championship, here's how you can do it. Send a stamped, self-addressed envelope to the Reebok National Aerobic Championship, 9000 Sunset Boulevard, Suite 1408, Los Angeles, California, 
90069. And now the announcement of the finalists in the individual men's division. From a Western Reserve Club in Phoenix, Arizona, Peter Dale. From World Gym in Columbus, Ohio, Eric Pierce. And competing first from Gold's Gym in Greenville, South Carolina, Nick Farmer. Nick, 25 years old, attended West Point, the U.S. Military Academy. First trip to the finals for Nick. You'll see that this man has really played on his strength. And he's, he has firm muscular strength and he's trained it to its peak over the last few years. He's really had to work though on flexibility. He even took jazz classes to prepare for this. He's only been in the sport three years, which makes him a relative newcomer, but a lot of people are saying he is considered the favorite. Unless something goes wrong with this routine, he is a strong contender for the title. Now look at these push-ups. He moves around so the judges can see them from all vantage points. He does them so slowly. Is that and tougher? Yes, yeah, slow is harder. And he puts a little leg variation in just to show that he can vary the position. Strength of that caliber is hard to come by. All right, now, off he goes. Look here. What's this that? Back, well, that's what he calls his Raja <laughs> Rabbit Ball. Listen to the crowd. Any piece of original creativity like that uh, is just endearing. The judges and the, and the uh, spectators love to see something new. Abdominal curls. Look how brave he is with his compulsories. He does his compulsories slowly. Look at me, I can do this well. Training for one year for this particular competition. second competitor from Columbus, Ohio, Eric Pierce. <laughs> Eric is 28 years old, his first trip to the finals. He's an Ohio State Buckeye, a former gymnast. <laughs> this man yo, stands 6'1". Look dude. at those long limbs, and he has the power to propel them through space. There's a hitch kick coming up right there. When you see that long leg go up, it is awesome. He is the largest competitor in the competition, and his uh, routine emphasizes this move right here, strength. Yes, now he has to slow his music down as compared to some of the others because he is so big, and he wants plenty of time to take full range of motion to make his kicks as big as he can. He was a bodybuilder for three years, so he's very, uh, very strong, very physically developed. Let's watch his abs. I love you. I love you. Perfect. Oh. That's a little, <laughs> that's a little tough on the Reeboks, isn't it? <laughs> They'll survive. <laughs> now, a leg hole which comes up from the floor. My goodness, he does that well. You know, that's been a concern of his that he would miss that. And once he got up, he held it for a moment. So he'll milk all the points out of that. A man of the 60s and 70s working to Proud Mary. Splits. It's not common to see so much strength combined with such flexibility. And he shows it off. Whammo. And those long limbs are so awesome. And you, know, you, you notice this man. Two good performances, but now third coming up from Phoenix, Arizona, Peter Dale. <laughs> Peter is 28 years old, his third trip to the finals. He's never won. He was second in 1988, and he's changed his whole routine since then. He is the gutsiest of the three.
also goes nice and slow on those compulsories so that the judges have good time to see how well he does them. Straddle press and he holds it. He gets points for holding these things long. Tremendous all-around athlete. He was a swimmer, ran cross-country when he was younger. He even has been hiking the mountains and hills of Arizona to supplement his aerobic training. Now a teacher at Glendale Community College in his spare time. Now you're going to like these push-ups. All right, here we go. We got one arm. Now we slip the under other arm through. Is that and more pizzazz or does that take a lot of strength? It looks well, it very, very difficult. Strength. Anything you do while yeah. you're doing a push-up adds to the, to the complication, to the intensity of it. Now here it comes. Now watch out. He's going to keep crawling forward. Now he's going to prepare. Here it is. Oh, I have seen him fall forward and bonk his nose. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that exercise near the fireplace in your living room, I guess. An inch is as good as a mile. He pulled it off. All right. Okay, it's going to be a tough call. When we come back, we will announce the champion of the Reebok National Aerobic Championship in the men's division. Stay with us. Chris Marlowe back with Charlene Prickett. We're at the Reebok National Aerobic Championship. Well, one of these athletes is about to become a national champion. With all the glory, honor, and prestige that title carries with it. As Reebok National Aerobics champions, these seven athletes selected today will tour America and the world as ambassadors of the sport. Please welcome now the 1989 men's individual champion, Greg Corelli. with a skill score of 156 out of 180 and a presentation score of 114 out of 120, making a combined total of 270 out of 300. The new men's champion is Nick Farmer, representing Gold's Gym, Greenville, South Carolina. Closest competition so far in second place with 263 points. Peter Dale in third place, 252.5, Eric Pierce. I bet we see those two again. We've now reached the team competition. Teams are made up of three individuals and maybe any combination of men and women. Here the judges watch for synchronization in addition to a high level of skill and presentation. Now, let's meet our three teams. First, from Miami, Florida, Charmaine Bassett, Frank Lubberdesk, and Orlando Garcia. Next, from San Francisco Bay Club in San Francisco, California, Diane Teresi Thomas, Andy Miller, and Mick Stangrover. And finally, competing first, from the Sports Club LA in Los Angeles, California, Tyler Patterson, Brett Kelly, and Patrick Goudeau. This team has been in training for over a year. Tyler is 27, Brett 28, Patrick 29. Three children among them as well. Brett has two children and Tyler one. And they all teach at the Sports Club LA. All right, we're gonna see a little setup here, a little fun with the music. We go to work. Interestingly, Patrick, uh, he's a personal trainer. One of his clients, Paula Abdul. That's a nice assignment. <laughs> nice clientele. Here, we're looking for synchronization here. Not only in timing, but in style. Now, this is, they call this the monster push-up. <laughs> I love this. See how they are? Yeah, yeah. Adding overload to the men and right smack into a voice split. Tyler comes right up. All right. Here we go. Push ups. And she has worked hard to get that chest right down to the floor. Tyler was.
was in the mixed pair competition last year. Always the women go home and train harder on their strength. And she found two more men to train with. That's right, that's right. You know, this is time consuming. This is a full-time job, so not everyone can do it in consecutive years. Beautiful high compulsory kicks. Now a roll backwards and a short straddle press, which they don't hold long enough to milk the points. It's hard to get into it because of that, that backward momentum they've gained with the roll. All right, team number one has done their thing. Now team number two from the San Francisco Bay Club in San Francisco, California, Diane Teresi Thomas, Andy Miller, and Mick Stengrover. Diane Teresi Thomas, 29, out of San Diego State. Andy Miller is 29, he's a CPA, and Nick Stangrover, 28, he's a construction manager. This is an unusual conglomeration. Look at the pictures. They made a last minute change today, deciding to leave out a move that might be perceived as the judges, as contraindicated by the guidelines of the International Dance Exercise Association. You never want to do something that would be seen to be difficult dangerous. Oh, look at this snake. Can we see it again? <laughs> what kind of snake is that? A rattler? Yeah, it's a push-up snake. Uh. <laughs> Overloading the guys at the back, you see. All of these variations that competitors add to push-ups make them more difficult and glean them more points in strength category. Again, a spike turning straddle press. If you can hold it longer, if you can turn with it, if you can do something unusual, more points. Push up again. Now watch them walk. Rotate and walk. <laughs> I like that. I do too. It's ingenious choreography. Very visual. Now they are worried about their ending, a shoulder hold. And they'll begin to think about it right now while these are doing these great compulsories. A straddle, a straddle again, and the last straddle. I'm glad I'm not judging this. I'm glad I'm not scoring this. It's very difficult because they paint such a beautiful picture with their bodies on stage. All right, two of the teams have competed. Now our third team finalist from Miami, Florida, Charmaine Bassett, Frank Lubberdisk, and Orlando Garcia. Seven months this team has been in training. Frank is the one who actually got the team together. He's the youngest competitor here. Only 24 years old. Well, actually, well, Orlando's 20. A split push-up again. Not unlike Jones, except that their foot is over the next guy, not their own arm. Now they're going to do a little musical interpretation. You'll see them several times using their torso and hips to give a kind of a Latin here it is, coming. Oh, this is a peel off, and they use this well. Audience record, come with us. Leg hold. Good balance. All three at once, you know, any one of the three could lose it. Now, we're talking real overload on these push-ups because they have her body weight. She's got the cushy job on that one. <laughs> Frank on the right, to make that Orlando on the right, only 20 years old. He began as a personal trainer at 14, so he's been in the sport for a while, even though he's very young. Okay, abdominal compulsory. A straddle hold, not very long. Now, a little portraiture, a jump, a straddle, a snag, a split, and look, upside down split hold. 
No problem with flexibility. Okay, coming up next, the announcement of the winner, America's Best Team Champion. We'll have that for you after this. Stay with us. Back at the Reebok National Aerobic Championship, I'm Chris Marlowe along with Charlene Prickett. The final results are in, and once again, here with the gold medals is the 1989 U.S. team, the U.S. team champions, Marlene Tucker, Merlene Tucker, and Paul Bell. Here's the scoring. With a skill score of 159.5 out of 180. Presentation score 109 out of 120. Their total score 268.5 out of 300. Your new 1990 Reebok National Aerobic Champions in the team division. Tyla Patterson, Brett Kelly, and Patrick Goudeau. Proving again. If at first you do not succeed, try again. Brett has been here three times before, Tyler twice. That's five tries between them, and it's paid off. Patterson, Kelly, and Godot representing Sports Club LA in Los Angeles. Second place, only five points behind the Diane Tressy Thomas. Andy Miller, Mick Stangrover, third place, 253, Charmaine Bassett, Orlando Garcia, Frank Labradesk. Close, close competition. Five points. We can only hope that we can see this second place and third place back here next year. What a moment. Charlene, uh, your impressions of the competition. Every year the women get stronger and the men get more flexible and the push-ups get harder and more complicated. What can we do to make them harder? You know, you see competitors time and time again come to this competition, fail, go home and train, come back again, fail, go home and train, come back again and win, proving that these winners are not born, they are developed by blood, sweat, and tears. Thanks for helping me out. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. it. Okay, that will conclude the 1990 Reebok National Aerobic Championship. Hope you enjoyed it here on ESPN. For Charlene Prickett, I'm Chris Marlowe reminding you... Don't sit, get fit! So long from Atlanta, Georgia. Travel arranged through Eastern Airlines, now serving Latin America with more non-stops than any other U.S. airline. Eastern, we're building a great new airline. Located in suburban northeast Atlanta on I-285, the Radisson N. Dunwoody features deluxe accommodations, swimming and tennis facilities, and fine dining and entertainment. The Reebok National Aerobic Champions will be touring the U.S. throughout 1990. If you would like them to instruct at your club or appear at your special event, call 213-278-9700.